Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. Before I start on today's discussion, okay, so I suppose to do the practical aspect of radiant immunity. However, okay, the amplifier inside the signal generator, they actually malfunction. So therefore, my equipment is actually undergo the repair now. So therefore, I could not do the practical aspect discussion on radiant immunity. So therefore, I need to skip that particular video and come into today's discussion, which is on the transient immunity EMC testing. There are mainly four types of transient immunity testing. Okay, so this video, I'm going to concentrate on the EFT, okay, which is the burst according to IECEN 61000-4-4 standard. Guys, if you're keen to know more about EMC, okay, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion of EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, okay, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, if you want to have a faster response, you are always welcome to ask me your question through the comment. Before I continue, okay, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. Guys, help me. Press the like button now. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. Before we go into the discussion on transient immunity tests, okay, we need to understand the two different types of immunity under the EMC testing. The first one will be continuous immunity EMC test, which consists of radiate immunity and also conducted immunity. Okay, so this video onward, okay, I will concentrate on the transient. Okay, so let's quickly understand what is actually the transient EMC test. Okay, so basically this form of test, they mainly assess the immunity of your electronics device to sudden short duration can be micro or nanosecond of testing, electromagnetic disturbance, okay, as well as their ability to avoid generating such disturbance. Okay, so in short, once you build your so-called DUT, okay, so you actually test them under a quick short duration and then you want to see whether your DUT can still function and not. So beside that, you also need to ensure that your DUT actually will avoid generate such kind of disturbance to their neighboring device. So basically, this is the objective of transient EMC test. Okay, so this test actually ensures that the device actually function properly in the environment okay, with transient electromagnetic phenomenon. Okay, for example, such as power surge, electrostatic discharge, and fast electrical transient. Okay, so like I mentioned, this video, we will concentrate on this okay, fast electrical transient. Okay, so there are actually four types of tests. The first one will be the electrostatic discharge. This video, okay, like I mentioned, we will concentrate on the EFT burst. We also have the surge immunity and the voltage dip, so-called form of test. Okay, let's go through briefly the four different types of E transient EMC tests. I have already completed the discussion on electrostatic discharge, okay, which is according to IEC 61000-4-2 standard. Okay, so why we need to do the test? Okay, so I guess every one of us has this kind of so-called situation before. Okay, when we actually about to touch the conductor, okay, either you discharge, okay, or the conductor actually discharge to you or to the conductor and you feel a pain on your finger, for example. Okay, so why we need to do this test is we need to ensure the device that we actually newly so-called manufacture, they must be able to withstand this kind of static shock. So imagine, okay, you probably need to touch your DUT. Okay, so when you actually touch your DUT, you actually discharge okay, the waveform okay, to the DUT. And thereafter, your device must be ensured that they still able to function okay, when you actually discharge your charge to them. Okay, so basically, this is why we need to do the electrostatic charge. Okay, so basically, in short, they actually simulate the static electric discharge, okay, for example, from us to the device. Okay, so there is actually contact and non-contact. Okay, so again, if you need to know more about this, okay, please see the playlist under the description to see more of this. 
This video, I'm going to concentrate on the electrical fast transient, okay, the burst standard. Okay. Why we need to do this? Okay, so firstly, we need to evaluate okay, the immunity okay, to fast repetitive transient okay, from switch and relay. Okay. So on my next few slides, I will explain this. Why we need to do this test is because of the switch effect or the relay effect. Okay, so why, how can we actually do the test is basically we will apply the burst of high frequency pulse okay, on power maybe communication and so the signaling control lines also. So thereafter, we need to check any so-called malfunction of our device or any data corruption okay, because of this so-called short interval pulse that we actually send to disturb your duty. Okay, so beside that, we also have the search immunity. Okay, I guess you know the meaning of search, which means that they actually so-called search very high energy, for example, for this case here. So the key purpose is we are going to test okay, your DOT resilience against this high energy surge okay for example from lightning okay when lightning actually strike nearby your duty we need to see whether your duty can still function or not okay for example another case will be the power grip okay so they have some form of surge and again we need to see your duty can still function or not okay so how can we actually do this small test we actually apply very high voltage surge Okay, very short duration. Okay, can it be even up to several kilovolts here? So why we want to do this is to, we want to ensure okay, we have the proper protection against power line disturbance. Okay, so this is the purpose of search. Next will be on a voltage dip. Okay, so basically early on we talked about search. So now we actually reduce the power, for example, voltage dip. Okay, so the key purpose is to simulate power supply malfunction. So basically we dip the voltage Okay, in a very short time, and we want to see whether your duty still can function or not. So basically, this is what this test is about. Okay, so the test device behavior will do a sudden voltage drop. Okay, can be all the way to zero. Okay, no voltage or forty percent or seventy percent dip in term of millisecond. Okay, so some of the so called standard actually require you to so called recover on your own. Okay, but some standard actually don't even allow you to do a reset. So basically with this you can see that whether your DOT can do a proper recovery. Okay, so after this kind of power disturbance you actually dip it. Okay, so you want to see whether are they still able to function such as let's say they actually reset by their own. Okay, if they are not so called able to reset then you may not be able to comply on this test here. So these are all the four main transient EMC tests. Let's come into a more detailed discussion on this EFT burst standard. Okay, so before I come into this, let me describe why we need to do this test. Okay, so imagine this. Okay, the switch is actually closed. Okay, you can see that a substantial current actually flow. Okay, so this is what I mean. When the switch is closed, okay, a substantial current actually flow through an inductive path okay let's say you actually interrupt this so-called flowing of the current okay by quickly open up this mechanical switch okay so earlier on this switch is closed so the current actually flow so now you quickly open up this so-called switch and you actually do a so-called interrupt okay so what happened here is basically you can imagine that a large voltage actually developed across the switch contact okay you can imagine that a large voltage will be formed in this so-called switch contact Okay, the magnitude of this voltage is actually proportional to the path total inductance and the rate of change of current. Okay, so basically, if this voltage is high enough, okay, when you have this, they actually create a very low impedance between these two points. And when this actually happens, arcing actually occur. So this is what you want to say over here. Okay, so once you have this very low impedance, okay, as a result, arcing actually happen. And once you have this arcing happen, okay, the voltage across the contact drop to nearly zero because it almost become a short circuit again. Okay, so basically this is what I mean. It's supposed to have current flowing. And when you actually open the switch, okay, at that particular instant, okay, basically arcing happen. And once arcing happen, this will be simulated like still the same so-called closed switch which allowed the current to flow. Okay, so basically this is why we want to do this. This test, I will come into more detail on my next slides here. Okay, so when the arcing extinguished, okay, which means that the arcing disappeared, okay, breaking the current path again. Okay, so another high voltage again will generate okay, due to the inductive circuit. Okay, by this time, the switch contact have moved slightly further apart, okay, which means that you are slightly further away 
Okay, so basically this is what it means. Okay, which means that a higher voltage is now required to break the air gap. Okay, so therefore we actually delay the arcing reformation. Okay, so basically this process repeat until the contact separately, completely separate, at which point that the store inductive energy can no longer produce a voltage high enough to sustain an arc. Okay, so this is what you want to say. Okay, so basically all this will be so-called described by the image below. Okay, so when we actually open the switch, okay, when we are very nearby, you can see the arcing actually happen. And when it is further away, okay, so the arcing actually become weaker. And then when we are further away, this arcing completely disappeared. This is what you mean here. Okay, so the image below, okay, a switch opening and arcing across provide an easy to understand example of how this type of electromagnetic interference can actually occur. Okay, the associate, the arcing associated with switching is often several arcs and has a potential to vary based upon the distance and also the breakdown voltage of the air gap. Okay, so this is why we need to do this test. Okay, so sometimes, for example, we may interrupt our power supply okay, at a very quick sudden so-called uh, when you actually open this switch, for example, okay, you actually form a so-called a short circuit arcing happen, and we want to see our DUT can still survive this kind of testing and all. So basically, this is why we need to do this EFT burst standard. Okay, so the EFT burst test is actually designed to evaluate the immunity of electrical and electronics equipment against transient disturbance, okay, such as those that is caused by switching transient, okay, interrupt of inductive load and relay, contact, bounce, etc. So which is I have described just earlier on. Okay, so this EFT or burst testing is actually a conduct immunity test in which the DOT is subject to a series of fast rise time, short duration. Okay, all these parts I will describe on my next slides. Okay, to ensure that they actually compliant and meet the product reliability requirement. This EMI, okay, electromagnetic interference event, is typically coupled onto the power line. Okay, beside power line, we can have the comms line, the control lines also. So they basically couple over using this CDN. Okay, but testing may also be required on all these lines, which I have described earlier on. Okay, so these are all the different test levels. Okay, so you have the test level one, two, three, four. Okay, so this is under the special consideration. Okay, even a harsher one. Okay, so some company actually want to test to ensure that their design is very robust. So therefore, we have this so-called special testing level. Okay, but for level one, okay, you can see that it's a very simple form of protection. So mainly it's just want to protect against this environment. And we are going to have low interference that is introduced to the environment. So test two, Okay, level two is the typical commercial and resident test. Okay, so when we move to test three, okay, it's mainly target for industry area and or maybe also some heavy machinery. And for test level four, okay, so basically these are for those very severe okay, industry high interference situation. Okay, so these are the four different test level. As you can see that the different test level, okay, you can see that the peak voltage that you're going to test also increase. Okay, but the rest, more or less, they are the same, except the peak voltage actually increase. So this is for the power. This is actually for the signal and control port. Okay, so this is mainly the power supply to power up your DUT. And these are all those so-called uh, cables that actually connect to your device, such as the signal, communication, and also the control port, etc. Okay, so basically, you can see from here, the different so-called voltage speed that you need to do the testing. Okay, so this is the so-called burst that we'll be testing against your DUT. Okay, so this is actually a 300 millisecond duration. You can see that the pulse, first pulse here, okay, actually separate by the second pulse with 300 millisecond. Okay, so why 300 millisecond is because they actually represent a realistic worst case scenario, okay, for repeating switching event. Okay, for example, a relay rapidly open and close multiple times. Okay, so basically after several tests, they found out that 300 millisecond is a very fair number okay, to represent a realistic worst case scenario to do the test. So if we're going to zoom in this part here, okay, they will look like this. Okay, so there are actually two types of tests. One is we call the 5 kilohertz repetitive frequency. Okay, so basically what is 5 kilohertz, basically the separation here 
is five kilohertz. Okay, so this is what you mean. Okay, basically this five kilohertz repeating frequency, this is actually the tradition. So this is how we always test. We are actually using the five kilohertz. However, okay, so this hundred kilohertz is closer to reality. Okay, which means that besides testing five kilohertz, okay, some company may also want to test against 100 kilohertz because they are actually closer to the reality, closer to the real environment that we actually live in and the testing will be as real as possible. So nowadays, okay, perhaps for some com company, they will concentrate on the testing on 100 kilohertz. Okay, so again, if we zoom into this part here, you can see over here. So you can see this five millisecond is actually the rise time. Okay, so on my next slide, okay, you will be able to see more of this. And we have this 50 millisecond duration, as you can see here, at least 50% here. Okay, so basically, this is the so-called the signal pulse that we actually send over to your duty. We're going to disturb your duty, and we want to see whether your duty can still function and all. Okay, so before I continue, guys, this is very important to me. Okay, please help me to like this video. Okay, when more of you guys actually help to like this video, this video will have a better chances to reach up to a larger audience. So guys, help me press the like button now. If you have learned something from this video, urge you to help me by subscribe to this channel. Once again, thank you so much for song support. Okay, let's quickly revisit. Okay, so earlier on, I did mention that we have 5 kilohertz type and we also have the 100 kilohertz type. Okay, so these are all the specs, okay, when you actually want to do the 5 kilohertz type or the 100 kilohertz type. Okay, so basically this is what we zoom into this one of the pulse here. They look like this. Okay, so this is actually what we call the rise time. Okay, it need to be under this 5 nanosecond. Okay, we also have the pulse duration, okay, which is at least 15 or plus minus 15 nanosecond in order to disturb your duty. Okay, so basically this is the pulse that we send in a repetitive manner, okay, either at this 5 kilohertz or 100 kilohertz interval to test your DUT. Okay, so let's take a look on a few diagram okay, before we conclude this discussion here. Okay, so this EFT burst standard according to IEC 61000-4-4. There are actually two types of tests over here. Okay, so this part here actually do the testing through the CDN. Okay, so on your right here, this test actually do the testing through the capacitive coupling cramp. Okay, so if you can, okay, most of the time we try to comply under this CDN type testing. Okay, so if not, okay, we actually use this capacitive coupling cramp. Basically, we actually couple the noise source over to the conductor of the wire and then basically reach your duty and you just need to see whether your EOT still function or not. Okay, so basically this is for the coupling. Okay, I have another diagram okay, that will give you a little bit more detail on this so-called CDN testing here. Okay, so we have this equipment okay, that actually can generate electrical fast transient or burst generator. Okay, so they actually couple their so-called disturbance okay, onto the coupling device. Okay, so the decoupling device actually prevent the noise source from reaching your lines. Okay, for example, let's say I supply my 230 or my power source to power up my DOT. Okay, so my noise that we actually generate, we do not want the noise to reach our power line. So therefore, we have this decoupling network to stop them from entering the lines. Okay, so basically the power will be supplied in only one direction and the uh, Noise effect will be basically coupled onto the power source, for example. And then what we need to see is we need to see whether our EUT can still function this kind of disturbance or not. So basically, this is what is on the EFT bus IEC 61000-4-4 standard. Okay, on my next video, I will explain a little bit more, a more detailed discussion on the test procedure. But with this, okay, I'd like to end my discussion. Okay, please help to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Once again, thank you so much for song support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much.